My name is Shelly Bambridge and I'm a sixth grade teacher this fall at Rocky Lake Elementary in Bedford. Welcome to the HRCE Summer Learning Academy. And I just want to say thanks for giving up your time. Uh, I hope you'll find that it is a front end investment that will come back to you. So you can probably hear my son outside, he's doing the lawn and when you have a teenager, you can't choose when they help. So um, I hope you can hear me clearly. <laughs> um, today, I'm going to be offering a session which talks about five tools that I use to supplement G Suite. Um, as much as I love one-stop shopping and I would prefer to do all my shopping in one place with one location, convenient stop. It's just not possible. And as a wise friend of mine once said, if you keep going to, to Canadian Tire looking for bread, you're going to continue to be disappointed. So today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about the benefits and the rationale behind why I use these five tools um, and how they enrich and engage the experience for my learners. I hope you'll find these tools helpful. Um, please remember that just because I'm sharing them doesn't mean that they are the best or the only ones out there. There are lots of great tools that you can add to your digital toolbox and I'm hoping to just give you some exposure and then point you in the right direction for where you can find out more about how to use them uh, effectively. And the, the reason I chose these five tools was, first of all, they're free. Let me say that again, they are free. And secondly, they all offer really awesome customer support. And their videos and tutorials are far better than anything I can produce. So I'll give you a quick overview, I'll talk about it, and then I'll put all the resources for where you can learn more about and you can dig deeper into how to do it. This is more about why you might want to do it. So um, what I'll do is I'll provide links in this video. So if you just are interested in Classroom Dojo, I'll tell you where in the video to go. If you're just interested in Book Creator, I'll show you where to go. If you're just interested in Canva, you'll find out where to go. So you don't have to watch the whole video. Please take from it what you like and just disregard the, the rest. I know your time is really valuable and you have to make choices as to where you invest your time. So please feel free to do so. I'll also put a link to all the resources in Google Classroom since I'm offering this session asynchronously. And I really hope that Google Classroom will be a place that we can come together to support one another. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask me. I might not necessarily know the answer, but hopefully I'll know where to point you to find the answer quickly. Um, and you know, the one lesson that I've really learned over the last couple of months is how important our virtual connections are. When we can't be together physically, there are still ways that we can support each other creatively. So I hope you'll enjoy this session. Please has, don't hesitate to reach out, ask me questions on Twitter. Uh, even though I'm at my cottage, I do still tend to say a little bit connected, although being mindful of my data usage. And uh, I do, you know, enjoy all of this stuff. So it's not really as much work when you enjoy what you're doing. Uh, a wise person once said, you'll never work a day in your life if you love what you do. And certainly I love what I do. This is my relaxation. This is my downtime. I know a lot of people will call me crazy, but I wear that badge of honor. I am crazy. Okay. So please enjoy this session and uh, please take from it what you like and leave the rest. So the first tool that we're going to talk about to help you level up your game is Classroom Dojo. And I've been preaching it for years to my school and uh, didn't have a complete buy-in until we hit the pandemic. And then uh, we had almost every single teacher and resource teachers, EAL teachers, um, and administrators uh, using this app. And they all learned how to use it very quickly without any extensive tutorials or anything. All the resources that you need are available within Classroom Dojo. Um, so what I like about it is you can post videos, you can post pictures, uh, you can post links and files. 
and it really brings together everybody in one place. And again, I should mention that this is not intended to replace a website or replace Twitter, or it's not intended to replace phone calls home. It's supplemental. And if you're already creating this content in a Google Doc or a Google site, um, you already have all the text you need, so you can simply copy and paste it. It's not that you have to re-enter it. And when people see what I do in Classroom Dojo, they think I spend hours on it, and I really don't. When I'm in the classroom, I'm doing my documentation and my parent communication as I circulate amongst the kids. Um, snapping a picture here, snapping a video here. If I'm doing a mini lesson, I'm recording the mini lesson so that parents are also seeing what we're doing at home. And what it does is it provides a private feed to share photos, um, videos, and files with parents. And that allows parents to be better informed on what you're doing in the classroom. And when it comes to parent-teacher interviews, they're dialed in. Talk to other educators about using Classroom Dojo. A common question that I receive is why would you use this app when you can simply send an email or a newsletter? And the answer that I have to that question is you cannot as effectively communicate the excitement and energy in your classroom in a text-based communication tool as you can with pictures and videos. And again, I want parents to feel the energy in my room. I want them to hear the language that we're using. I want them to see the evidence of growth. And I want to showcase what students are doing in the classroom because as a mother of two boys I can't tell you how often my boys came home and when I you know I was so excited to ask them about what went on in their day and almost inevitably I would hear the uh, we did nothing mom and it was so frustrating for me because it was really hard to engage them in a meaningful conversation about their learning and support them at home when I didn't really have a great window into what they were doing that day this tool allows me to very effortlessly communicate with parents and showcase what we're doing in the classroom so that parents can support their learners at home and those conversations can flow between home and school seamlessly now, did I also mention that if you have a, a population that doesn't speak English, this is the app for you. Dojo is also super helpful for me as a classroom educator working in a very diverse community. The majority of my families do not speak English at home. They either speak Arabic, Korean, or Mandarin. And what's really nice is I can put text-based messages into the classroom dojo. Parents can use dojo to translate it into their language of origin. So while it's not a perfect translation, it's a whole lot easier for them to get an understanding of the message I'm trying to communicate by easily translating it within the app. And I can actually see how many parents are translating my messages. I can tell when they've opened a message. I can even tell who hasn't read my messages or viewed my posts and that way if I have an issue or if I have to you know some important information I know that I can target my time and only focus on the families that haven't read my messages already and again this is not a tool that I just started using as a result of uh, our remote learning I've been using this for years and I was able to work very efficiently with this app and communicate with families Families, when we had power outages, when we had fire alarms or fires, when we had early school closures, so that I was able to post a quick message, parents were able to respond to me, and I did not have to spend all of my valuable time on the phone. Instead, I could be managing my students, and the app took care of all that administrative work for me behind the scenes as effortlessly while I was focusing on my students you who are worried about sharing uh, your personal cell phone this app has also got the solution for you it allows you to communicate with parents without having to disclose your phone number so I can message them from my phone without them knowing my personal cell phone number it also allows me to set up 
uh, office hours or quiet hours so that I'm not interrupted by alerts from the um, Dojo app when I'm focusing on my family, which is an important way for me to maintain that work-life balance. Also use um, Classroom Dojo to encourage positive skills. And I'm not suggesting that you assign points and, and keep a leaderboard going on in your classroom. However, you can um, use this tool, particularly if you're displaying it in your classroom on your projector, you can use it to reinforce and um, give feedback when you see when you catch kids doing good things so for instance I've customized my skills to um, cultivate being a problem solver demonstrating effective communication or resilience or stick to itness so all of those things are easily custom customizable and you can turn off whether or not they're shared with parents or not if you click on the little button um, in my slideshow you'll see how to customize those skills all the tutorials are right there in classroom dojo see there's the toolkit so I can set a timer which is really helpful again if I want to give them a warning and help in their transitioning I can use that feature now I can also go back to my toolkit and I can see I could pick someone randomly so it is now Johnny Dean's turn to ask a question answer a question and that's a great way to keep kids on their toes now I can also go to my group maker and if I want it I can establish who I don't want grouped together. So I definitely don't want Bradley and Matthew together. They are a bad combination. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose another group that do not work to well together. Haley and Johnny do not work to get well together. So those are my students I want to keep separate. Now I'm going to make groups of two, and I've got one left over, so well, that is not always the way. Wouldn't it be nice if we always had even classes? So um, I can also go back into my toolbox, and I can use my noise meter. And again, I have to turn it on so that it's allowing uh, my microphone to be used, but I can set my sensitivity too. So if I'm a little bit more sensitive to noise, if we're doing something that's a little quieter, uh, actually a little quieter would be this way. So this is really loud. If it were indoor recess, I might have it down there. So that's again, a good uh, visual for the kids to keep um, a track of how loud, how loud they are. So I also have directions, so if I wanted to do journal writing, I could add the first item would be get your journal and pencil out, brainstorm. and I could just continue to add and then I can also save it for later so that I can pull it up again and there it is it's right there and it's super fast and once you create it and save it you can revisit it so it's a really nice visual that is there okay and again those are all in toolkit now think pair share you can display a question, you can create a new question, um, and then you can encourage students in their groups to discuss this question, okay? And again, you can always add a new question. What was the I'm going to save this for later and there we go it's up there super fast in one spot and especially when you have this app open all the time it's a great place to go to now again it'll display the date so again that's helpful to have and you can even choose a channel to play music so either to focus or or music that will energize your students. 
So those are all features that are there, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was um, some of the things that might come in really helpful for remote um, indoor recesses, sorry. So big ideas. These are great little videos that all have to do with social and emotional learning. And they have videos on growth mindset, perseverance, empathy, gratitude, mindfulness, moods and attitudes, big challenges, respect, positive thinking. Um, also, there are some videos there on how to use Classroom Dojo. Portfolios is the instant digital way for students to share their learning with you, the teacher, and families at home. That means no more important student evidence lost in the backpack, and families are consistently in the know all year long rather than having to be updated at back to school night. You get to approve each post before it goes out to families, and only their family can see their posts. Give students choice by allowing them to log into their accounts and post to their portfolio. Or if you want a little more structure, you can assign an activity. Just click the button right about here, it says create an activity. Then you can have students write something, record a video, take a photo, or draw something. You can even post for students by clicking add a post right about here. Creating an activity is simple. Click create activity, give your activity a name, and decide what instructions will be helpful for students. You'll then choose how you want students to respond. This is great for activities like exit tickets or assessments or anything creative that you want students to show you their thinking. When you're ready to let students start posting, click Student Login. This will allow students to log in on their own devices. Here's a look at what students see on their side of the app with activities right at the top. As students begin to submit work, you'll notice post pending approval on your side noted by the yellow bell icon. You can either approve all or click on the assignment to approve it. All right, let's click student login and get to posting. So I hope you found at least one tool from Classroom Dojo that you might be willing to try. And just remember that there's all kinds of support out there for you in how you use it. And again, take as much of the app as you think will suit your practice and your students and leave the rest. It doesn't work for every teacher and every community. So we are now going to move on to our next tool for your digital tool. Well, our next tool we're going to be talking about to level up your G Suite game is Flipgrid. One of the things that I find really challenging as a classroom teacher is to ensure that every student has a voice. And there are always those students who are the ones who are always raising their hand, quick to respond, and oftentimes they stifle other learners who aren't as confident and reluctant to share their thinking. So what I like about Flipgrid is it gives everyone equal voice and it only really came to surface for me because of the needs of remote learning and when I saw so many students who I saw such improvement in since remote learning I knew I needed to find a different way to really get at who was doing what whether it was the students or other people in the home and Flipgrid provided me a tool now, going back to face-to-face -face learning, I will still continue to use so that I can hear from those students who are more reluctant to share their thinking in a whole class setting and are more reluctant to take risks speaking in front of the whole group, but maybe more comfortable sharing their thoughts through a Flipgrid. We are, you know, cultivating a different breed of students. We want them to get comfortable in front of the camera, expressing their thoughts confidently, and Flipgrid is a great tool to do that. It also works particularly well for students on adaptations, any students that are struggling to express themselves um, in traditional ways, but maybe more confident expressing themselves orally. It really gives them a great outlet to do that. And like I mentioned earlier, I just figured it out and my students figured it out while we were working remotely. One of the great features of Flipgrid is they have the how-to videos for students 
for teachers, for families who are supporting Flipgrid at home. And as we started to use it with my grade two class during remote learning, my kids were teaching me all kinds of great features along the way. And there are filters. You can layer text. You can come up with some really creative ways for students who don't like to see themselves in front of the, the camera. They can either put an emoji over their face or they can uh, do a screen share so they can model what they're doing on the computer. And there are some really great opportunities to st for students to build connections to each other, to learn from one another, and for you to support struggling students. One of the things that I was most impressed with by using Flipgrid was how excited and how much improvement happened when my students started using Flipgrid to record their reading. So I encourage them to become a reader, a better reader. They should listen to themselves reading and they loved watching themselves read. Um, and what was nice was I encourage them to give themselves both hearts and hints, and their friends were able to connect and give them hearts and hints. I encourage them to try to read smoothly, grouping words together into phrases, reading with better expression, all the things that we do when we're working one-on-one -on -one with students. However, this allowed me to not have to be there with them one-on-one, -on -one, and I was still able to see evidence of what they were doing. They loved watching the videos, and I saw such growth and improvement. So just because we are going to be face to face with our students doesn't mean that we can't take a good advantage of this tool to better support our students face to face. We have to remember we are working in busy, big classes with lots of students at one time. This is a tool that we can use to better support our students regardless of whether or not we're face to face or we are remote. And it really does provide such great opportunity for students to become reflective learners and to learn from their own experiences. So I always find that the most powerful learning is that which you can experience yourself. So what I've done is I've created my own Flipgrid for our PD session. And what I'd love for you to do is test it out. Um, I'd love for you to watch my video as a student and then post a response for me. I've shared the link in the Google Classroom so you'll be able to access it. And don't panic, you don't have to commit to signing up for an account if you don't feel prepared to do that, you can simply enter my code and uh, post as a guest by typing in the code Y2K teacher and that will allow you to make a post without committing to signing up. So I'll just show you what it looks like as a student. Um, I can join or I can enter with a guest password. So again, if you want to use the guest password, I'm going to show you what it is. It is... And I'm going to click go. The last feature I want to share with you is the discovery board. 
And the discovery board is a great spot where you can find prompts that are ready to use. And there are would you rathers, there are weekly check-ins, there's all kinds of things that you can use to get started right away in your classroom. So let's just see. And I think what I'll do is I'm just going to go into this topic. So it is weather. And again, it's geared for students aged 5 to 10. What seasons do you have? What is the annual rainfall for your city? Uh, this year for your city, what has been the highest and lowest temperature? Does your city experience any extreme weather patterns? Please tell us more about them. I'm going to add that topic and I'm going to add it to our discussion grid. Now, I want to change it a little bit. What is the weather, weather in Halifax? We have, what is and I'm going to put, does your city, does our city experience any street, please There we go. So what I've done is I've tweaked it to suit what I think is appropriate for my curriculum and my learners. I'm going to leave the media that's there and I'm going to update the topic and then I'm going to share it. And I'm going to share it in Google Classroom and I want to make sure I am into my Gianez Pez account and I'm going to share it to our Summer Learning Academy and I'm going to make an assignment, okay? So this assignment is, what is the weather? You only have one minute and 30 seconds. And I could change that. I could go up to as a maximum of 10 minutes. You only have one minute and 30 seconds to record your video. So plan your response. I'm going to also remind students to look at the camera when recording speak clearly. Okay, so I'm going to assign it to all students. I'm not going to put a due date on it and I am going to include it as a Flipgrid topic. So there we go. I am assigning it and it's that easy to post an assignment to um, the Google Classroom from the Discovery Board topics. So there are lots of topics in that discovery board and remember that's right in your header from your educator login and you can search topics so you might want to search I don't know maybe it'd be even interesting to see if there are any COVID-19 um, and again some of those uh, might be for older learners COVID thoughts building community again um, this might be a great way to talk about how students are feeling in a safe environment before um, school starts so that you have a, a good window into how they're feeling and what you're going to be dealing with. So lots of options. Um, have a look at it and see if you can find some things that are ready to go so that you don't have to create the content. You can just use the content that's already there. So now I'm going to show you the third tool that will help you level up your technology integration toolbox and enrich your G Suite game, and that is Kahoot. Now Kahoot is an interactive play-based uh, platform that allows students to show what they know in a fun and interactive game-based environment. There is little to no setup for teachers. It's easy to access. It's user-friendly. It's free. Students don't need to log in. And there are multiple ways to play and use Kahoot. It's cross-curricular and there are a ton of resources on the Kahoot website so that you don't have to spend your time creating content. You can simply curate content and then customize it to fit your curriculum. 
So um, you can sign up for free as an educator and you um, all the instructions you can find in the Google Classroom in my slideshow. A couple of things I want you to remember before I show you some of the features of Kahoot and why I like it. Um, they offer free PD and it's really easy to do their, their PD. Um, you watch a video, you do a quiz, and then you get a badge. So it's super simple. And they've been really responsive to the changing world we live in. Uh, you can now assign challenges so that they can be completed remotely. And again, all of the tutorials on how to do this are available on the website. And I would not bother creating little how-to instructions on how to do it because these things are evolving and they're constantly getting better. Um, get into the routine of discovering the cahoots that are out there. So I'm going to show you how to use the Discover board to find cahoots. So I know that I want to start my year off with place value to 1000. And I would look for something that um, has had a significant number of plays. Um, and I'm going to use this one. Actually, I'm going to go back and I think I'm going to start with this one. It's had a lot of plays. Okay, and it's got some visuals, which is also very nice. I like um, cahoots that have visuals as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once I've had a look and I see that this is a cahoot that I'm interested in, I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to make a copy by going to the left hand side of my screen and I'm going to click on the three dots. Once I've determined that this is something I'm interested in, I'm going to duplicate it. And once I've duplicated it, it's now in my Kahoot library. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it because I don't want it to say duplicate. I just want it to say place value and I'm going to put place value to 1000. And now what I want to do is I want to edit it. And I want to make sure that, first of all, all of the questions are appropriate and aligned with my curriculum. And I also want to make sure that the answers are correct. So how many tens would I need? Uh, my number is 239. So once I've checked to make sure that all of those are correct, I am going to add one more question and I am going to have it so that the students have to um, build a number. And let's just see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include build the largest number you can with the digits below. A challenge question because it is going to create a number that is over a thousand and that's okay because this is I always want um, to remind students when they are using Kahoot that it's not about being perfect I want them to demonstrate a growth mindset and I also want them to take chances with their learning so I often will include a ceiling question that my students will struggle with because I want them to get comfortable with struggle. Now I am going to give them a longer period of time to figure this out. I'm going to give them two minutes to figure this out and they actually have to drag these numbers into the right order. So then I'm going to click done. Now what I want to do is I want to test this Kahoot out and it's always a good idea to test your Kahoots out until you get comfortable with using them. So I'm going to play classic and my students will get, and again, I'm going to turn this music off. You can choose different music. Um, you can also play full screen. And if I were displaying this in the classroom, I would display it full screen. Now, I am going to play it from another tab on my computer. And I'm going to, and I always encourage them not to use nicknames. And if there are um, multiple students uh, with the same first name, they use the first name and last initial. 
once you've got all of your players registered, you can lock the game and then you can start it. So that prevents others from joining it after you've already started. And it encourages them to make good use of their login time. And again, this is a live game that we're playing. So how many tens would I need to make the number 73? And again, I have to look at both screens to know because on my screen, it only displays the colors for the answers. It doesn't display the question. So I have to look at two spots. And again, if you have a student on IDA, adaptations or an IPP. You can still have them involved in this activity by working with a partner. They could also manage the screen for you and advance through the questions. So the question was, how, my number is 239, how many ones are in my number? Okay, and again, you could do it so that you are not, it's displaying the um, number of correct responses. And again, you don't have it, have to display uh, the leaders or the scores. Um, if you don't want to, you can control all of those things in your settings. So what number is this? And again, I have to look at the question and then answer it on mine that doesn't display the question. Okay, so it is a really fun way to get kids excited, thinking about the responses, problem solving. And there are also ways you don't have to have just one right answer. There can be multiple right answers. It can be questions that are um, true and false. There are all kinds of different options for how you can play cahoots. But what I did want to point out to you is that there are so many cahoots available that will fit pretty well with your cur curriculum. And what I will do is I'm also going to assign this Kahoot. It's an intro quiz that I am going to assign to the Google Classroom so that you can, um, I think I've already done this one. Let me just see, assign. Yes, it says uh, I've already um, assigned this one. And what I do once I assign it is I can choose it can, it can be posted to the Google Classroom. And again, I want to make sure I'm logged into my right Google Classroom. And I'm going to post it to the HRCE Summer Learning Academy. I'm going to create an assignment. And this time, I'm going to call it uh, Create Topic. It's going to be called Kahoot. Now I have assigned that to Kahoot or to um, Google Classroom and it's all there very easily, very quickly, seamlessly linked. So it's a very user friendly tool to use and it gets students uh, excited and it allows you to um, kind of test their prior knowledge. Um, it's great for uh, formative assessment. I can see exactly who has played the game. I can see the name that they've used um, and I can also see the score that they received. So I can tell who might need some support. Um, I can see, uh, and again, I really encourage the students to use their actual names so that I can go back and provide them with support. But all of the reports are there and you can um, give targeted intervention based on their responses. So I'm now going to take you to one of my favorite tools as an educator um, and also as a student, I would say, because I use this myself in my master's program at Memorial. So Book Creator is an app originally, and it has been developed for Chrome as well. And it is an open-ended creation tool that costs uh, $5.99 per device for an iPad, but it can be used by students for free if you have an educator library. So it's important to remember that students cannot create their own books unless they're attached to a teacher library. And a teacher library consists of 40 books for free. You can pay for upgrades, but it's 40 books for free. 
So uh, Book Creator is um, a really educator-based um, company. They create uh, great resources and they do a really good job of showcasing what teachers do and how they use their tool in the classroom. So all you have to do is go to the Book Creator uh, website from your Chrome browser, um, sign up for an educator account, and then you can start exploring their resources. It's super simple to use to make interactive pages that allow you to add voice, text, video, um, you can embed files, you can embed um, web links, and you can even embed uh, Google Maps. So it's got a ton of potential. It's easy for students from grade primary on up, and it supports differentiated student needs and abilities. It provides ease of publication and digital sharing of resources, particularly it gives students an authentic um, outlet for the, the work that they do. So you have to start off by creating a library, and that library can be shared with your students. And again, all of the step-by-step -step instructions are going to be in the Google slide. So I'm not going to get caught up in the how. What I want you to, you to know is that students love sharing what they know using this app. And again, it's cross-curricular. There are so many possibilities from creating digital portfolios to poetry books, step-by-step -step, uh, nonfiction writing, science reports, learning journals, or comics. And it may be a really helpful tool for us to use as we think about how we are going to operate in this new world that we live in, uh, trying not to touch things, trying to social distance. I think it's going to be a really great way for us to allow our students to show what they know without us having to interact with paper. So um, there are all kinds of really great videos that are linked in the Google Slides and they give you all kinds of inspiration on how you can use it from littles all the way up. And again, it's really intended to be mixed media. So students are really encouraged to create their own artwork that they can integrate into a digital book. They're encouraged to include their voice their own pictures, and it really makes that learning really meaningful when they can do that, especially when they can layer, you know, their own drawings on top of their pictures of themselves. It just increases that engagement and that excitement that comes along with learning. So um, all of the resources are there. Remember when you go to the Book Creator um, site to connect your account with a GNS Pez um, account and then if you're using Chrome and you have the sync feature on it'll automatically remember your password um, and your username so you don't have to remember that it will your username will be your email address uh, what I encourage you to do is sign up for an account press pause on the video sign up for an account and explore it hands-on take the time to do that um, and have some fun with it whether or not it's creating a book for your own child or for a grandchild but make it meaningful maybe you want to create an introduction book to share with your students get a chance to play with the app because oftentimes we as teachers don't get enough time to play. I'm Shelley Bembridge, and in this short tutorial for teachers, I'll be showing you and walking through you through the steps to get started using Book Creator for Chrome. Welcome to Book Creator. This tutorial covers creating books, sharing books, and setting up libraries for your students. Welcome to Book Creator, and I hope you have fun getting started. This tutorial covers creating books, sharing books, and setting up libraries for your students. My Books is your private library. When you log into Book Creator for the first time, you'll see this tutorial book that I'm recording for you now in My Books, except it won't have all my recordings. My Books is your private library where you can create and store your books. You can also create libraries which can be shared and accessed by your students and other teachers. Adding content to a page in Book Creator is really simple. All you have to do is press the plus symbol in the top right corner to add different types of uh, content 
like images or videos, items from your camera roll. You can also record video. You can actually write on the page. You can add text and you can record audio. There are so many possibilities in how you can add content to your book. So right now, what I would love for you to do is open up the book creator tutorial in your bookshelf and try adding content to the same page that I'm recording on. Moving content. Adjusting the layout of your page is easy. You can move, resize, and rotate the content on your page by using your mouse or finger, depending upon whether or not you have a touch screen. So when you're ready to move content, you either hover your finger or your mouse on top of the item that you want to adjust. You'll see the four arrow hashtags and that tells you that the item is selected and you can drag it. To resize an object on your page, all you have to do is hover your finger or mouse on the edges of the image where four blue dots will, will appear. You can either drag those to make it smaller, pinch, and or drag them out to make them larger. You can also rotate the orientation of an object on the page by, again, hovering your finger or your mouse on top of the object and then spinning the green circle so that you rotate the orientation of it. So again, I'd love for you to work on this and try out these three tips for moving content on your page by adjusting the book creator icon in the tutorial. See if you can move it up or down, see if you can make it bigger, and see if you can put it on an angle. Styling content with the inspector. With the I button on the top right corner of your screen, you can inspect content on the page and style it. This is your opportunity to do some editing. So you can change the font, the size, the color of the font, the background. You can also adjust the color of your page background and you can also layer objects. So if you want items to come to the front or go to the back, you have that option inside of the inspector. So take some time with the book creator tutorial example that you have in your library and play around with the inspector. See if you can make the text purple and see if you can also um, add it with some a different color background and change the size and color of or size and style of the font. Reading your book. You can read your book at any time by pressing the play button. This will open your book in the web reader where you'll be able to flip through the pages. Publish and share your books. Try not to be a perfectionist when it comes to sharing your books. You will never publish anything if you wait until it's perfect. So when you're ready to share a book, you can publish your book online using the share button. And that share button looks like a dot um, it looks like the greater than sign. And so there are three dots in that formation. And you'll see that on your screen. Published books have a private link and you can choose who to share it with. So remember to try it now. Don't wait until your book is perfect. Press the play button to read the book and then press the share button to publish it online. And remember, just because you publish it at this moment in time doesn't mean that it's published forever. You can always stop sharing that book. So don't be afraid, get creating and start publishing some books to share with your students. Working with students. To get started, create your own library. The free plan lets you have one active library, which can store up to 40 student books, and I encourage you to have one book per student. 
If you need more books, there are upgrade options available for every budget. And hopefully, given the current situation, administrators will be sympathetic to, to budgeting technology tools. Invite students to your library. Your students can join your library using a code and their books automatically appear for you to read. Students can only create books inside a teacher's library. So if they're not connected to your library, they won't be able to create their own books. And that's an important thing to remember. So they will get an invite code and they'll need to use that invite code in order to start creating their books. You're all set. That's really all you need to get started using Book Creator with your class and for your own practice. Need some help? Get in touch with Book Creator. Check out their user guides for more information. Join their regular Twitter chat to share ideas and tips on how fellow educators are making really good use of Book Creator. You'll really be inspired by some of the ideas that you see if you follow their Twitter chat. You can also check out the expansive bank of resources that Book Creator has compiled for students and teachers, tips and tutorials for how to make good use of Book Creator. There's also some fabulous templates there that you can customize so that you can use the tools that are already there for you without having to spend a lot of time creating them. You can just uh, customize them so that allows us to work more efficiently. So happy bookmaking. I hope you've learned something. I hope you'll have fun being an author and publishing your books. Be sure to share what you create. I'd love to see it. So the next tool I'm going to introduce you to is Canva. And Canva is basically a graphic designer. And it gives you really professional looking uh, publications and allows you to access some really fabulous images and templates. So what's really nice about Canva is if you sign up for an educator account, you have access to a ton of different resources than if you just sign up for a personal account. So be sure to sign up for an educator account. Now, I don't know if any of you are familiar with um, the Cool Cat teacher. Vicki Davis is amazing and she's shared how she uses Canva to support education in her classroom and some of the really great ways that she gets students using some really official and professional looking publications to share uh, their learning and also to create their own content. So oh, there are lessons on social change, there are history lessons, math lessons, there are a ton of different resources that are available. You can also create really eye-popping slides and presentations very easily. And of course, they can all be um, uploaded to Google Slides. You could save them as an image, um, which is the way I like to do it. I like to be able to save them as images and then upload them. So I find it really creates some very visually appealing uh, presentations when you're creating your own content. And again, the templates are all there. You simply have to customize it to suit your need. Now, what a lot of people have not really been aware of with Canva is they also provide you with charts and graphs. So you can share uh, scientific concepts or statistical or mathematical information in a very visual way. So there are a lot of data, data modeling templates and you'll find everything from flow charts to Venn diagrams, strategy maps and decision trees to comparison charts, bar graphs and pie charts. And again, these things are all possible in Google Slides, but the templates don't exist the way they do in Canva. So they have a really ease of, there's a real ease of, of use in Canva that there isn't in Google Slides. And I should say that I haven't found in Google Slides. Maybe other people use it better than I do, but I really love the look and feel of Canva.
You can also create your own customized worksheets and exercises to support your curriculum. You can build your own or choose from a range of existing templates from writing prompts and journal entries to book review designs to multiplication tables, word problems, and science puzzle layouts. It's also super easy to make copies of your worksheets and exercises. You simply hit copy this page icon to the right of your design and it, Canva instantly creates another copy for you. So once you have a copy set up, it's easy to tweak it and customize it or revise it. You can also build a really eye-popping brand for your classroom and create some really wonderful customized posters that you can print off at school. Um, and, and using that language of your classroom, you can create your own customized, very polished and professional posters. And so what I've used Canva for as I've used it for um, announcements, I've used it for invitations uh, to events that we're having at school. I've also used it for the headers in my Google Classroom and on my website. And again, I just have to populate it with my personalized information. All the templates are there. So I'm going to take you to the Canva website and see what you think of it. Okay, so here I am and I can go into school and there are all kinds of things that are available in school. I can see education infographics and again, once I, um, I could make a copy of this and then I can customize it. So right now I want to work on my own infographic about COVID and the precautions that we need to take at school. But you can take any of these. Here's one on the life cycle of a butterfly. Simple steps to bicycle safety. The difference between fiction and nonfiction. Uh, there's so many different tools that are all here. And you can easily customize it. Now I'm going to show you how to customize it. So you simply just click, click on the box, educate kids. I'm going to keep okay. And again, it's just a matter of moving things. Got the ability to upload your own images. So you can upload from your camera roll or you can upload from your photo gallery. You can also use their photos. So I'm just going to see if there is a COVID. Oh, there is. There's a COVID germ. That's so cool. Okay. So I just want to put that COVID germ in there. And again, I can simply change the size of it. It's really intuitive and no problem to navigate. I can also add elements. So for instance, if I wanted to create a frame for that COVID germ, so I didn't like how that COVID germ had a square background. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a photo in there of the COVID germ. And I think I can do it there, there. And again, I'm going to make it the right size. There we go. So it does take a little bit of fussing, but it is so worth it when you look at the final product that you get. It's such a professional looking publication and it is super easy with a ton of pictures that are there that are uh, free for us to use. Okay. So um, now you can also, let me just see, when you're ready to download it, you have choices. You can download it as a PNG with a transparent background, a JPEG, a PDF, a PDF print. You can even download MP4 videos or GIF school, just so you have a sense. You can do brochures, you can do presentations, posters, worksheets. And again, there are a ton of different worksheet templates from time. Uh, there's all kinds of math worksheets that you can access. Look at them all. KWL charts and look how beautiful they are. And again, you can customize them to suit your needs. So let me just see like a dice game to be able to customize that. And again, you can change any of these dots 
to suit whatever you wanted to do. And you, if you wanted to do multiplication, you could simply orient it so that it was multiplication. Okay, so it's so easy to customize to fit your curriculum. You don't have to spend a ton of time doing it because the templates are already there. So math week worksheets, there are English worksheets. So conjunctions, you could all again customize it so that the sentences were all meaningful to your students. You could also do social studies workers and you could even include pictures of people from your community and get them to label them if you wanted to. Um, and then there's just so many possibilities for how you can customize the content to make it more meaningful for your learners without spending a ton of time at the photocopier or, you know, um, creating brand new worksheets. You can just use a template and customize it, which is so nice because oftentimes when we get things from the internet, they're all PDFs and it's a real pain to uh, edit it. These are all here so that we can edit it easily. Now, let's just see if there's anything else I can get you excited about. Um, so, let's see. We're going to go back to school. Got worksheets. There are also lesson plan sheets, yearbooks, class schedules, mind maps. Let's just look at the options that are there for schedules. How nice would it be to have one of these beautiful schedules on your website? Look at them. They're so lovely. And again, all you have to do is customize it to suit your schedule. So hopefully I've gotten you excited about at least one thing. And again, when you download them, you can download them as a PNG. So they go, you do all the editing in Canva, then you download them as a PNG and you can put them into your website or Google Sites, or you can put them into a Google Slide or a Google Doc. It's so easy. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you some of the things that I have in my, my designs. So all of these things have now been saved to my design. So I can go back and easily edit them. And this is what I was telling you I've been working on, but I like the one I created with you better. So spread germs, not kindness. And again, I found all of these images on the photos page. So they're all available there and I color coded them to make sure that they matched my, my theme. Now it's just so much fun. Now when I go back to all of my designs, you'll see other things that I've done. I, I created the template for this presentation there. I've also done headers for other uh, presentations I've done. I've done posters, I've done letterhead, I've done certificates, done Valentine's cards. There's just so many things that you can do. I did a wedding gift for my cousins for their grandmother's cookies and I actually had it printed out at Costco and as a poster size and then put it in a beautiful frame with actually a shellacked copy of the cookie. So again, this is how I get excited about things. I do them personally and then I figure out how to work them into the curriculum and whenever I'm enthusiastic about something, inevitably my students get enthusiastic about it too. So. It's a lot of fun. I can also create business cards. I use a lot of different tools, but the most important thing is that it's connected to your curriculum or you're having fun with it and uh, it's all free. So I hope you'll have some fun and I hope you'll uh, take away something from Canva. I will be posting a link with a Google form as an exit ticket for attending this, ses this session. And I'd really appreciate if you could let me know what grade level you teach, any advice that you might have on how I could better deliver this PD to make it meaningful and relevant for you. One new thing you are inspired to try, and I'd love to know your Twitter hand. And uh, I hope we get to have some PD together face-to-face -to -face one of these days soon.
Thanks so much for giving up your time to join me for this PD. I hope you got something out of it without being overwhelmed. And I know I do have the tendency to give out a lot of information at once. And I hope you'll take from it what you like and just disregard the rest. Um, remember that we all bring different gifts and talents to our classroom and we're all at various stages of technology integration. Your strengths are definitely my weaknesses. So the fact that you showed up today is a great demonstration of your mindset and your commitment to your students and our province. So thank you for showing up. Please remember, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out because one thing we know for sure is that we need support and we are stronger together. So feel free to flip me a Flipgrid video. You can also send me a message in the Google Classroom. And I'd love if you followed me on Twitter. Um, and I'd love to follow you so I can see all the cool things that are going on in your classroom and be inspired by you. I hope you have at least one thing that you're going to try in your classroom. I know it's gonna be a stressful fall and uh, just keep calm. We will get through it. We always do. Keep the faith. This too shall pass. Good luck.